I gotta shut my window before I record, cause fucking Boca Raton don't know how to be quiet, baby. How's it hanging, ladies and folks? My name is Chris R.R. Balzo, and this is my show. You're about to hear the 18th chapter of my ongoing sword and sorcery narrative. A story written, read, performed, and edited all with your ear holes in mind. But don't concern yourself with going back to catch up quite yet, because this episode, like every episode, just so happens to be the perfect jumping on point. And then once you're hooked, feel free to go back and check out previous episodes of the show while you wait for the next one to drop. But for now, all I need you to do is sit back, relax, and allow me to unfurl the wizard scroll. Nightfall in Oakburn. The crickets, owls, bears, owl bears, merc monks, chipmunks, and other woodland critters could all be heard going about their usual business as we arrive at the town gates. Those gargantuan wooden doors, the only passage into and out of the village. Wanted posters depicting every manner of criminal were plastered all along it as a pair of cool as heck orange paladins or Chops for short, presently chatted the hours away while manning their post. So, uh, you heard about the Timberfall Tavern's grand reopening? Oh shit, that's tonight, isn't it? Yeah, my brother Carl's a busboy down there. Says he can totally get me Don Snapper's autograph. No effing way. Way. So anyway, I was doing- Hold that thought, Sanchez. You see that? He lifted a finger and pointed into the night, to where both men could now clearly see the faintly glowing torchlight briskly approaching from the wilderness, as well as the pair of shining purple eyes that came along with it. And before either man could react in any meaningful way, into the clearing marched Rodney Bobson, the warrior who had healed from his wounds, shaved his beard, bought a fake mustache, and got himself a sword arm since we'd seen him last. The bulk of his six foot eight frame blotting out the dual moons above as he stood before the guards. I seek passage into your city. For food, supplies, a place to lay my head for the night, and perhaps some pleasure as well. Any inns you fellas would recommend? And they, one of whom currently clutching a wanted poster with Rodney's mugshot on it, They glanced back and forth between the paper and the warrior's mustachioed visage about seven or eight times in quick succession. It was like, huh, 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 huh? It was like eight times of doing that. (laughs) Yeah, this ain't the guy, Tim. Let him in. Sorry about the delay, kind sir. Just some routine security type stuff. You know the vibe. Oh. Before you go, if it's pleasure you're after, then might I recommend the hottest spot in town, the Timberfall Tavern? Bet. Running a tavern is not just a business, it's a science. From the height of the stool to where your eyes fall first on a menu, and nobody knows more about bar science than Don Snapper. Yeah, hi, I'm Don Snapper. Over the past 36 years, Don has transformed over 69 failing taverns across the realm of Yergsland. I don't embrace excuses. I embrace solutions. Using his years of experience and no-nonsense approach. Holy forking shit, there's bolts in my drink. Shut it down. Don will turn these money pits into money makers. Actually, mm, that's quite tasty. I think I'll have another. Hello, I'm Don Snapper, and welcome back to Tavern Rescue. This week, we've had ourselves one heck of a fixer-upper. This place was burned to the ground by some demons back in episode 109. But thanks to recent developments in bar science, we were able to plant and grow a new oak tree in the original's place 
and do it millennia ahead of schedule, no less. All right, chop her down, boys. Help, I'm ascending a tree! The camera then panned to the various employees standing there, crying tears of joy at the sight of that gigantic stump. As it was gutted like a jack-o'-lantern and carved into the shape of a tavern's interior. Anyway, the Saw's men are just finishing up now, and we'll be ready to head inside by the end of this sentence. I'm telling you, that was totally tree magic. Uh, um, dumb fuck. He said it was bar science, not magic. <sighs> really, Scar? You're really gonna sit there and tell me that some E equals MC square motherfucker's just gonna come in here, okay, and make a tree come out of the dirt faster than a tree magician can? I don't fucking think so. I think you've had one too many. Maybe ease up on the blue motherfuckers and wizard weed for a bit. You know what? I'll just go ask him myself. Ask him? What do you... Crystal Antoine Everfall, what the fuck do you think you're doing? God, she always does this shit. Oh my god damn god, it's Don Snapper! Why yes, hello there, young lady. Always a pleasure to meet a fan. Uh, what? What are you? And then, ever so slightly as to not arouse suspicion, she opened her cloak, giving the guy a real good close-up view of her fake badge and the candy cane striped wand strapped to her hip. Now looky here, bucko. My associate and I. Yes, there she is, just over yonder, you see her? Hey, Scar, I love you. We hear you've got your hands on some cool magic trinkets. End game level stuff, if you know what I mean. The kind of stuff that makes a tree grow 69,001 years old in three and a half minutes. Um, you, you got the wrong guy, yeah. No, no magic trinkets here. Just, just my good old bar science. Cut it, quit it, and shit it, Carl Geezer. I've been working my butt and my ass on this case for the past 15 years. And by George, I've got dirt on you so dirty, your ass will be added straight to the pain mines unless you clean up your act, A dollar sign AP. You... you don't know what you're talking about. I'm a simple businessman. Yes, no illegal side hustles here, Officer... Uh, Shark, is it? It's Charte. And guess what, Donnie boy? Luckily for you, I'm a crooked chop. So we can just let this one slide real smooth-like if you hand over the goods and also bribe me. Cut to... Boom, baby! That's how the dynamite rumbles! I cannot believe that worked. Oh, ye of little faith. Now let's peep that spread. <laughs> let's peep that spread. <laughs> let's see here. A fuck ton of gold, not bad, not bad. And here we have... Whoa! No way! What? It's a motherfucking crystal acorn! A crystal what now? All right, so basically, this acorn-shaped little crystal here has all sorts of magical properties, such that if one equips it, they'll gain some crazy buffs and cool abilities. Oh, word. Word. Now check this shit out, B. She reached for her gold chain necklace, grabbed a hold of the fingernail-sized dagger hanging from it, then impaled that acorn-shaped, acorn-sized crystal upon its jagged razor's edge. And then she pulled out a spliff, lit the end with her laser eyes, and took a 12-second long drag. Before looking straight at the camera through a thick haze of wizard weed smoke. Legalize it. Come on there, kiddos! I want to see that wheel rotate! Ah! But wait! What's the point of all this torment? I've been pushing this wheel for, for 
17 god dang years. And what does it achieve? Oh, I feel my muscles expanding. Oh, but it's so painful. Oh, yeah, I forgot about these huge fucking pythons. 24 inches, motherfucker. You don't get this sitting at home lifting curly weights. You get it with the Conan Exercise Wheel of Torment. Only $29.99.99. And, but wait, I'm not done yet. Order now and I'll add a fucking cock and ball torture extension device. For your, for your little fucking cock air, you can stretch, stretch it out like a piece of taffy. The rhythm of the night was in full swing by the time Rodney's prodigious frame ambled into the establishment. The band on stage jamming out a tasty lick, fans lining up to peep Don Snapper's receding hairline in the flesh, lines of sausage rock getting cut up with an orc's credit card and promptly snorted, shots, 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 and shots flowing all around as the warrior did his absolute dangdest to keep a low profile about him. After all, he was wanted for high treason by the highest office in the land, the Undead Empire. Last thing he needed was trouble. In fact, the only thing he needed at this juncture was to procure a couple dozen beers to help take the edge off. So that's exactly what he did. Barkeep, bring me a keg of your finest mead. I'm sorry, did you just say... a keg? Did I stutter? The whole keg. And make it snappy. Oh, uh, of course, my good man. One keg coming right up. the number two spot on my shit list himself. Did you miss me? With every lethal blow so far. How that she? Ain't no fighting in here. That's it. I'm calling the chops. Everybody freeze! Don't move! The full force of Oakberg's squadron. Fourteen uniformed officers of various races and creeds had been called in for backup as they brandished their batons in the warrior's direction. Rodney Bobson, by order of the Lich Queen, you are under arrest for attempted murder, straight up murder, operating a fake mustache without a permit, as well as 69 other miscellaneous offenses. How do you plead? Innocent as fuck. Put down your weapons, son. Cuff him, Bubba. Ha <laughs> ha yeah! Take him away, boys! Crystal the raddest ever fall. You're also under arrest. Say what? For possession of cool magic powers without a wizard diploma. 88 counts of petty theft. 420 counts of wizard weed smoking, and for impersonation of a cool as heck orange paladin. How do you plead? Yo, mama! Oh, what you say about my mama? Then he charged forward, baton brandished in a backhanded grip. That courageous officer of the law dashed forward with the intent of bludgeoning Crystal into compliance. Like all good cops do. <laughs> Hey, racist as fuck out here, even in the fantasy world, you know it. But with a spin and a swipe, Rodney had tripped this man and sliced his weapon in half. So, uh, truce? Truce. In seconds, the rest of the guards had formed a tight circle around their perps, such that if they struck first, the whole squadron would be on top of them before either could react. So Rodney slowly waved his sword arm to and fro, standing back to back with Crystal as she set her wand to stun and allowed its star-shaped tip to glow a bright pine green. And lo, 
he and she, they and them, they all stood like this for a good long while, with the two vagabonds slowly spinning around, getting a good long look at each of those 14 chops. Who all gritted their teeth and clenched their weapons just a little bit tighter as the impasse passed. <laughs> One guy sneezed, a break in formation which the warrior immediately took advantage of. He tossed the elf into the air, where she went into bullet time and began blasting chops left and right. As Rodney dashed forward, grabbed the back of one chop's neck and went in for a headbutt so powerful that the dude's medulla oblongata imploded. Then he stabbed him in the chest and swung his dead body around like a club. Crystal slow-mo aerial assault came drop kicking its way right into the final chop's face, just as Rodney's clenched fist made contact as well. And let me tell you, the combined force of both attacks simultaneously caused the man's head to deform into the shape of a hammerhead shark. Also, he died. Well, I think that's all of them. Come on, Scar, let's bounce. Scar? Scar? Where are you at, baby? I have... Many questions. I'll explain on the way home. But first... Hey, Rodney! Thanks for the help back there. I still think you're a total douche, but, you know, real recognizes real, you feel? Yeah, I feel. Alright, let's get the fuck out of here. I just killed like 12 cops. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to me screaming about wizards for 15 minutes. If you're still here, odds are that you've enjoyed what you just heard and are stoked for more. Fear not, dear listener, because new episodes are coming soon to an RSS feed near you. But in the meantime, there's already over 8 hours of content available right this second for your binging pleasure. Probably more like 9 at this point. But anyway, feel free to check out the complete first season and let me know what you think of the show. Either as a review on your podcasting platform of choice or anywhere else on the internet. And until next time, mm, bye bye Hello, I'm John Taffer. Shut it down! Shut it all down! Wow! Now I am John Taffer! Hello, everybody! <laughs> that doesn't sound like John Taffer. Yeah, shut it down! Shut it all down! <laughs> Hello, I'm John Taffer. I'm Don Snapper. <laughs> Hello, I'm Don Snapper. Shut it down! What else does he say? <laughs> Welcome back to Tavern Rescue. <laughs> How the fuck am I going to do this? I don't know his voice. Yeah, it is I, John Taffer. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what, what am I doing? Uh, it is I. John Taffer. Hello, it is I, John Taffer. Yeah, it is I, John Taffer. I am John... <laughs> it is I, John Taffer. <laughs> he sounds like he's fucking cuz he's, like he's trying to take his shit. I am John Taffer. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm John Taffer. Hello, I'm John Taffer. Okay, I think that I'd be best off with that. Oh, I am John Taffer. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> what? I'm John Taffer. <laughs> it's like a... Arr, arr, I am John Taffer. <laughs> it doesn't sound like any of these. <laughs> I'm John Taffer! Yeah, hi! (laughs) 
What's this with T-Pain? Oh, wow, I'm T-Pain. Sacktown. Yeah, I'm John Taffer. This is what John Taffer sounds like when he's not yelling. Oh, I'm John Taffer. <laughs> Come on, buddy. I'm John Taffer. I gotta, like, get the jowls going. Like, I'm John, I'm John Taffer. <laughs> what the <laughs> Yeah, hi, I'm John Taffer. Yeah, hi, I'm John Taffer. <laughs> I'm John Taffer. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, I'm Don Snapper, and this is Tavern Rescue. <laughs> yeah, hi, I'm John Taffer. Like that kind of nasal. Like, yeah, I'm John Taffer. And then lower it a bit, and I'm like, yeah, hi, I'm John Taffer. I'm John Taffer. I could just make him an orc and have his voice be funny. I could do that, honestly. Fuck all this. Hello, I'm Don Snapper. All right, I could work with that. <laughs>